What is up you guys? Welcome to the video. So today I am here to give you sort of like a shorter EDM news update. Actually, it's more of an insomniac events update because I'm gonna be talking to you about four really big announcements about insomniac music festivals. So first and foremost, I told you guys that I would keep you guys informed as soon as I heard any news about EDC Las Vegas and Pasquale Rotella himself, the owner of Insomniac Events, has spoken. So while we don't have a full update on what is actually happening with EDC Las Vegas, he did leave this comment on a post on Instagram, so I'm gonna read it to you really quickly. It does have some information about Beyond Wonderland as well for anybody who has been wondering about that festival, but it reads, I know a lot of you are looking for an EDC Las Vegas update, so yes, we're continuing to plan EDC Las Vegas and Beyond Wonderland for their scheduled dates. There continues to be new developments and we're in constant communication with local officials. If things change, however, we have a backup dates in place and I'll let you know soon. So obviously this sent shockwaves throughout the entire EDM and festival community. I think we've all been sitting here patiently waiting to hear what's gonna happen and I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about my opinions on that. I had been saying recently that I felt like it was a 50-50 chance. Um, I had heard some things that they were moving forward with the original dates and that they are planning for it to happen. So, you know, it sort of confirms that right there. I had also heard that, you know, they were trying to put different safety measures obviously in place to make sure that this would happen safely, but I know people have a lot of mixed feelings about it. I think my my biggest things I would say about the EDC Las Vegas announcement in particular is just the sheer size of the festival is what kind of throws me off. I personally feel like there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's amazing to see people getting vaccinated and I do think we will see the return of some events this year, whether they're in the summer or the fall and depending on what state that they're taking place in. I think the biggest questions I have about it happening in May is what are people gonna do who are traveling internationally and that includes some of the DJs. I'm not really sure about all of the travel restrictions anymore depending on where you're coming from. So it would really suck if some of you watching had bought tickets and you don't feel comfortable enough or you don't feel safe traveling and therefore you have to sell your tickets or keep them for, ne for next year. So I do think that's really unfortunate. The other thing is I feel like they were probably banking on the fact that more people around our age or you know people in their 20s and 30s and even 40s would be getting vaccinated sooner. And I think it definitely seems like it's taking longer than expected. So that's another factor that kind of plays in here. I do know of some music festivals who have successfully had events this past year by doing two-step COVID testing systems. So essentially you get a PCR test within 48 hours of the event, and then you take a rapid test upon arriving to the event. I'm not sure how long that process takes when you arrive there. And obviously again, it's kind of a crapshoot because if one person in your car tests positive, you all have to turn around and you won't get entry. So I can imagine if you travel all the way to Las Vegas and it's a similar system, I can't even imagine the frustration if, if that happens to some people. The other part of me is torn because of course I would love nothing more to have music festivals come back, but you do want it to happen safely. And I think it depends on your situation at home and your health as well. I live alone, I work from home. Um, if you live with your parents, if you live with grandparents, I think you have to make a personal decision at that point um, if it's worth risking their health, and I don't think that it necessarily would be. Um, I think also if you can quarantine before and after, I think that's a huge factor as well. So if you can come home and you are able to stay home for 10 days straight, uh, that makes a difference. But if you're somebody who sees a lot of people, if you work in a certain field and you're gonna be around a lot of people, like a medical field or something like that. You know, I think they're just, there's so much up in the air and I, I do wonder if people would have more peace of mind attending EDC if it happened in say October because a lot more people would be vaccinated at that point. So that was a very long rant. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm very torn about it myself and you guys know how much I love EDC Las Vegas. I do have tickets. If it happened in May, would I go? I think if there was like a multi-step testing system, I think I would go and I would 100 million percent wear my mask the whole weekend. I think that's the other thing that's like a little nerve wracking is just like the amount of people that would be there. Um, and obviously you're gonna wanna hug people, you're gonna wanna see people you haven't seen in over a year. 
Um, so I don't know. So there's a lot up in the air, but you guys let me know down in the comments how you feel about it. Same thing for Beyond Wonderland. It sounds like it's moving forward with its dates. Um, and I believe that was going to be happening in June. Oh wait, the last thing I wanted to say about EC Las Vegas is I just hope that they let us know well in advance. I know we're already getting to the end of February here, but I would hope that within the next few weeks, like at least give us a two months notice because I'm sure a lot of you are like me. I don't have a hotel booked. I don't have a flight booked. I've been doing everything very last minute because I just don't want to, you know, waste money or commit to something that's not going to happen. So I know that's probably what they're waiting on because you guys see how rapidly things change. Like things could look so different a month from now. But when you're planning a music festival at that scale, I feel like you just have to pull the trigger and make a decision in advance to give people enough time to plan and make all of those choices and things like that. So either way, I hope they make a decision by early March so that we can all decide how we feel about it and make plans. Okay, the second piece of news I wanted to announce is about a new music festival from Insomniac Events that is gonna be taking place in Orlando, Florida. And Pascual tweeted, alien invasion coming. I've confirmed with Countdown New Year's Eve, extraterrestrial sources that an intergalactic event is imminent. An outdoor landing zone has been identified in Orlando, Florida, which is really, really cool. So this is a new festival. It's called Abduction 2021. I believe it's a single day event. As far as I know, I think it said it was April 10th. So yes, yeah, Saturday, April 10th. It is at Lot 54 at the Vanguard. An outdoor event, 5 p.m. to 12 a.m., 18 plus, mask required, temperature check. Um, so he did tweet that out. Numerous human safety measures are in place, like required masks, digital temperature check checks, and our Insomniac Earth Defense League in full force so i thought that was very interesting i am not surprised at all that florida is going to be the guinea pig for this situation because they are pretty much open um, i did have some people commenting that on my facebook group like how are they able to pull this off and i was like i have family down in florida and like shit is wide open people are not wearing masks they're going to bars like it is a different country over in florida right now so i think this will be an interesting test to see how this goes like if there is no outbreak after, if they can do this safely and a ton of people don't get sick, I think that says a lot for the music festival industry in general. Um, and you know, anybody in Florida, if you're local, if I was local, I would go to it 100%. I don't think I would fly there for a single day event, um, but it will be interesting. And it's, I guess it's like a sister festival to Countdown New Year's Eve. So if any of you guys have ever gone to that, I'm sure it'll be a similar experience. But I think this is another part of their new branch, Insomniac East, which they announced last year. So, so far they announced EDC Orlando and then they announced this festival. Um, I believe Forbidden Kingdom as well. So it seems like Insomniac is definitely making their imprint in Florida. I'm still sitting here hoping that they will move up to the Northeast eventually, but we have stricter guidelines right now, so. And the last piece of news, which honestly, I am so excited about. I just saw this last night and like nearly myself, I was like, oh my God, this is like a dream come true. So Insomniac Records announced Lost in Dreams. This is a new record label and a new festival coming soon. It says, since 1993, we've aimed to create a home for every type of dance music fan out there. We're excited to continue that mission with Lost in Dreams, a brand new festival and its own dedicated record label, both of which will open up with a new world of future bass, melodic dubstep, and vocal driven dance music. We are so happy to have you here. Are you joking? Are you actually joking? I mean, I don't know who else is so excited for that. I love melodic dubstep. I mean, Seven Lions is my favorite artist. Future bass has been popping off. Vocal driven dance music sounds amazing. So the fact like this was so necessary. I think these subgenres have been growing in popularity and I think it is gonna be absolutely incredible that they are gonna do a festival for just these genres. Like catch me there, catch me there 100% and a record label. I can't even wait to see the artists that they get on there. Insomniac Records has some incredible like up and coming and rising talent. So a whole new record label, chef's kiss. I'm so excited about this announcement. I think it's an amazing new venture. I will keep you guys posted on details on that festival. Again, my inkling, my inner gut feeling is telling me it's gonna be in California just because all of Insomniac's events are pretty much in California. So me over here in New Jersey will cry, but 
you never know that I would actually fly out to I'm gonna wait to get the details on that and when it's happening but I would fly out there for a melodic dubstep future bass festival that would be absolutely incredible so anyway you guys I covered a ton of information here again please be kind and respectful in the comments I understand this is a very very touchy subject and people feel extremely strongly about it either way um so just please be respectful I really just wanted to report on the news and tell you guys what's happening and keep you in the loop again I feel extremely conflicted about all this as well I don't really have an answer or I can't tell you what is right and wrong that's up to you to decide but um, I really want to hear your thoughts and again I have my EDC tickets so we'll see what happens, but I hope to see you guys there whenever it does happen. And yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think about the new Abduction Festival and Lost in Dreams label and festival. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and share this with a friend today. Tell them about my channel. If they're into EDM, hopefully they'll like it here. They can find a home in this community. Uh, I also have a podcast, Rave Culture Cast, which comes out every single Wednesday and is filled with tons of interviews and cool stories from ravers and people in the industry. So I hope you guys enjoy that as well. And I think that's all I have for you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.